Echo's T7e Mark II is a faithful recreation of the iconic Binson Echo Rack, a staple effect of 1960s and 70s rock, reggae and electronic music. Unlike the more common tape-based delays of its time, this vintage Italian Echo machine utilizes a magnetic drum. For Echo's T7e we carefully recreated the mechanics and electronics of the classic Echo Rack and enhanced it with advanced features and deep customization options. In this video I'll guide you through all the features and show you how to use the plugin in your productions. Before we explore the features, let's take a quick look at the general operation of the plugin. The toolbar located at the top allows you to handle your presets and manage your global parameters. Press the HQ button to activate oversampling. This reduces aliasing and enhances the audio quality, but also increases the CPU load. To experiment with random settings, use the randomize button. Press reset to return to the original settings of your selected preset. Click the Audiority logo in the top left corner to register your plugin, customize file locations and change the plugin window size. You can also change the size by clicking and dragging the lower right corner. Stay up to date by keeping an eye on the notification bell, which lets you know when updates are available. Click and drag any knob to change the parameters. To enter numeric values, double click a knob while holding Shift. Right-click on any knob to lock or unlock it. To open the extra settings, click the little triangle in the bottom right corner. Echo's main panel features controls that are identical to those found in the original device. To explore it, I will load up the init preset. With input control you can adjust the input level of your incoming signal. Just like the vintage tube-based unit, the plugin will overdrive at higher input levels. Try to crank up the level to add some distortion and bite to your echo. Length of swell is an old school term for feedback. The higher you set it, the longer the echo will repeat. If you turn up the swell all the way, the echo repeats infinitely, creating the characteristic feedback loops often associated with analog echo machines. The volume knob sets the level of the echo. With bass treble, you can control the tone of the signal, turn it up for a brighter, thinner sound or down for a warmer, rounder timbre. Note that all controls on the main panel only affect the sound of the echo, not the dry signal. <laughs> So far we only listen to echoes in repeat mode. With the selector knob we can switch between three different modes. Echo, repeat and swell. To better understand the different modes let's take a closer look at how the vintage echo rack works. The record head prints the incoming signal to the magnetic wheel. The wheel rotates and carries the signal to the first playhead, which plays it back. It then travels to the second playhead, which plays it back, and so on. Finally, the signal reaches the erase head, which deletes it from the magnetic drum. With that in mind, let's explore the three different modes. In echo mode, each active playhead plays back the signal once. To activate the playheads, use the switch knob. Playhead 1 is closest to the record head, so the echo is the fastest. If playheads 2, 3 or 4 are activated, 
the distance between the record head and playhead increases, resulting in a longer delay for the echo to be played back. With the switch knob, we can also select different variations of playheads, for example, one and two. Or select playheads two and four. As you can hear, different combinations of playheads lead to diverse delay patterns. In position 12, all four playheads are activated, resulting in four consecutive repetitions. Echo mode is great for short slap echoes that go well with guitars, drums, or vocals. Addicted to your touch, addicted to your love. I don't even show it, you already know it. Note that the length of swell, aka feedback knob, has no effect in echo mode, as there is no feedback present. The second mode we can choose with the selector is called repeat. In this mode, echo acts like a standard delay with feedback. Many classic recordings of the 60s and 70s prominently use repeat mode, and it's mostly this sound that elevated the echo rack to legendary status. In repeat mode, the record head prints the signal onto the drum just like an echo mode. But now, once it arrives at the playheads, it is not only played back, but also fed back to the record head, which prints a second copy of the signal onto the drum. This second copy travels to the playhead, once again gets played back and is fed to the record head again. So instead of one repetition per playhead, we now get multiple repetitions. As the signal is continuously re-recorded onto a lossy analog storage medium, it gradually becomes quieter and deteriorates with each repetition. This characteristic tonal limitation of analog echoes sounds very pleasant to most ears and is one reason why this vintage technology is still beloved by many producers today. If we increase the length of swell, the repetition gets re-recorded louder onto the drum, resulting in a longer delay fade-out. At a certain point, the delay does not fade out any longer, but keeps getting louder with each repetition. This is called a feedback loop. This swelling effect is typical for analog delays and is often used as a musical effect, most prominently in genres like reggae and dub. If turning the length of swell all the way up fails to produce a feedback loop, carefully elevate the input and output levels as well. The third mode we can choose with the selector is called Swell. This mode creates a reverb-like effect by combining a single echo from all four playheads with additional feedback from the selected heads. The Echo Rec plugin offers three play modes, Classic, Vary, and Sync. In Classic mode, which we have been using so far, the magnetic drum rotates at a consistent speed of 71 rotations per minute. The delay time can be adjusted by choosing different playheads. The only way to change the speed of the drum in Classic mode is to touch it. In Vary mode, we can adjust the drum's rotation speed to alter the delay time. Vary mode was not available in the original Echo Rec, but it's a popular modification that some users added. To change the drum speed, open the extra settings by clicking the little triangle in the bottom right corner. Now just the drum rotation with the speed knob located in the global section. If you turn it all the way down to 20 RPM, the signal needs much longer to travel from one head to another, resulting in a longer delay. Mind that lower drum speeds also reduce the speed stability. As you turn the knob up, the drum's rotation speeds up, so the signal travels quicker from one playhead to the next, and the delay sounds faster. If you 
change the drum speed while the delay is running, you can create typical pitch effects. The third play mode, sync, locks the magnetic drum speed to the DAW's tempo, so the delay will always stay in sync with your track. When the tempo of your track exceeds 100 BPM, the rotations per minute will be divided by two in order to keep the delay musical. As previously mentioned, we can access the extra settings page by clicking the little triangle in the bottom right corner of the main panel. This reveals a selection of additional controls and features that were not present in the original Ecorec T7e, allowing you to refine and tailor your sound. Let's start with the head control section. Due to component tolerances, wear and tear, and calibration errors, no magnetic playhead sounds exactly like the next. With the head controls, we can precisely adjust each of the four playheads individually and have exact control over their sonic uniformity. When tone is set to 100%, the playhead delivers a crisp and vibrant signal. This is what it sounds like fresh from the factory. As I turn down the tone knob, the echo becomes increasingly muddled and opaque. It now resembles a worn out playhead that's accumulated grime and deteriorated with age. The error knob adjusts the position of the playheads along the magnetic drum. When error is set to 0%, the heads are perfectly aligned. This means their physical distance from each other is exactly the same, which will lead to identical time gaps between all four echoes. This is how a brand new or freshly calibrated unit would sound. As we introduce higher levels of error, the position of the tape heads shift, causing slight differences in echo timing. The delay sounds less precise, but more lively. And finally, with the volume control, you can adjust the level for each playhead individually. For an authentic sound, slightly vary the settings of the four playheads from each other. This accounts for the typical component tolerances and wear and tear that analog components undergo. Let's now take a look at the global controls, which are located on the right side of the middle panel. As we learned before, the length of swell knob located in the main panel of the plugin is used to adjust the delay feedback. The feedback knob down in the global control section is a trimmer to fine tune the length of swell knob's feedback level. If Echoes goes into self oscillation too quickly or doesn't deliver the feedback you desire, even at maximum swell settings, you can use this knob to attenuate or boost the feedback levels a bit. We already met the speed knob in the chapter on the different play modes. It only affects very mode where it controls the rotation speed of the spinning magnetic drum. The H control affects the brightness and speed precision of the magnetic drum. When set at 100%, the echo sounds clear and stable like it would with a factory fresh calibrated drum. Lowering the H knob introduces wow, flutter, and reduces the overall audio quality, which resembles a worn down aging drum and gives the delay a lo-fi character. Like any vintage analog machine, the echo rack introduces some hum and noise to the signal. We can use the noise control to adjust the level of hum or even switch it off entirely.
The noise floor can be used to push the plugin into self-oscillation without external signals in repeat mode. If you crank up the input and output and boost the hum level a bit, the noise alone can create a feedback loop. Musicians in the 1960s and 70s famously used this technique to produce psychedelic sound effects. And finally, mix controls the balance between the dry and the wet signal. By default, it is set to 50%, which is a good starting point when using the plugin as an insert effect. If you use echoes as a send effect on a separate return channel, set mix to 100% to avoid doubling the dry signal. Similar to the vintage Echo Rack, the switch control in the plugin's top section allows us to activate different combinations of playheads. In addition, we can manually select the playheads in the Heads configuration field at the bottom left. This control element originates from the 1972 version of the Echo Rack, the PE603. With the upper row of buttons, you can select which of the heads will play a single echo. The lower row of buttons selects which playheads feed their signal back to the input and are being repeated. Note that this only has an effect in repeat or swell mode. By activating echoes and repeats independently, you can dial in combinations that can't be selected with the switch button. Try four echoes and add feedback to the last one. Or feedback only without echoes for a softer swell. Note that the custom settings of the head's config menu override the switch presets and are safe to those. So if you set the switch to preset 1 and change the head's configuration, the new configuration will be saved to preset 1. This allows you to create up to 12 custom presets and recall them with the switch. The original Echo Rack was a mono unit. For a stereo effect, you would have to combine two units. The Echoes plugin is stereo by default. With Stereo Spread, you can enhance the stereo width by adding an offset to the right channel delay time. The delay extension control reduces or extends the global delay time. By setting speed to the minimum and turning delay extension all the way up, you can achieve a maximum delay time of 11 seconds. To use echoes like a preamp without delay, turn delay extension down to zero and turn mix to 100%. Now you can shape your dry sound with echoes tone controls without introducing any delays. And finally, you can gain stage the output level with output boost. This will affect both the dry and wet signals. Click the gear icon in the bottom left corner of the main panel to open the extra parameters window. Here you will find the pan controls to adjust the position of each playhead in the stereo field. Pan law allows you to change the panning behavior, which also affects the feedback levels a bit. 
In linear mode, the volume curves are linear, so both the left and right channel will be at unity gain in the middle position. In pan mode, the minus 3 dB pan law rule is applied, so the center position is attenuated by 3 dB. This results in a smoother volume curve and prevents the impression that the signal is louder at the central setting. In pan mode, the feedback level is slightly lower compared to linear mode. To attain a similar level of feedback, you may need to increase the swell or input level. With tube low cut, you can cut off the low end of the incoming signal before it enters the delay circuit. This can help reduce low frequency clutter and clean up the sound of the echo. Speed filter adds extra realism when you change the speed parameter in vary mode. At lower speeds, the echo sounds darker, while higher speeds brighten up the sound. And finally, light mode reduces the plugin CPU load by disabling some of the more advanced circuit modeling features. Turn it off before rendering to retain the best audio quality. This concludes our Echoes T7e Mark II tutorial. We hope it was helpful and you enjoy your Audiority plugin. Thanks for watching and see you soon.